In this video, we'll be demonstrating how to build a simple convolutional neural network or CNN in Keras and then train it on images of cats and dogs. So in previous videos, I explained some basic principles for working with Keras. And now in my last video and over the next few videos, we'll be solely focusing on CNN. So it's recommended that you watch the previous set of Keras videos before moving forward because we will be using some of the items we learned in those videos and building on them here. And it's especially important that you watch the video that comes directly before this one regarding getting set up to train a CNN on images in Keras because we'll be picking up directly where we left off there. So our goal in this video and over the next few videos is to build a CNN that can identify whether a given photo is an image of a cat or a dog. And in this video, we'll only be focusing on building a simple CNN from scratch and then training it on our images of cats and dogs that we organized in the last video. So now that we know what we're going to be focusing on here, let's go ahead and get started started in code. So here in my Jupyter Notebook, we're in the same notebook as we were in last video where we organized our images here. So I'm just scrolling up to show you the same notebook. And we see that we have our sample images of cats and dogs here. This is just one batch that I printed out to the notebook last time. So now we're in our build and train CNN section of the notebook. And we're going to start out with building a model. So we're going to be using a sequential model just like we used in earlier videos that weren't covering CNNs. And our first First layer is going to be a convolutional layer and this is Keras Conv2D layer and this is just a two-dimensional convolutional layer that we'll be using since we're dealing with 2D images. Now this first argument I've specified 32 and it's pretty arbitrary. You can specify any number but you'll learn what makes sense over time and this number is just the number of output filters in the convolution. Our second argument here, this 3 comma 3, this is the kernel size. So the kernel size is a tuple of two integers that is specifying the width and height of the two-dimensional convolution window. So our convolution window in this case is going to be three by three. And then we're using the ReLU activation function and our input shape. We're specifying this because it's required that we specify that in the first layer of any sequential model is 224 by 224 by three. So this is the height, width, and channel dimensions of our images. The channel here is three for RGB color scale. Then we have a flatten layer, and this is taking the output from the previous layer and flattening it into a one dimensional tensor that is then going to be fed into this dense layer that has two nodes because this is going to be our output layer that's categorizing images either as cat or dog. And we're going to use the activation function of softmax in this last layer. So let's run this cell. Next, we are compiling our model. So just like we've seen in previous videos, I'm going to use the atom optimization function here with a learning rate of 0 0.0001. My loss is going to be categorical cross entropy, and I'm going to specify the array with the single string accuracy as my metrics. Lastly, to actually train the model, we're going to call model.fit generator. Now in previous videos, we were using model.fit now we're using model.fit generator. So fit generator fits the model on data generated batch by batch by our image data generator. So if you recall, I'm just going to scroll up here. In the last video, we created an image data generator for our train, valid, and test batches here. And this was grabbing batches of images from our train, valid, and test paths that we defined here. So since we're in training right now, we're only dealing with our train batches. So our image data generator is getting batches of size 10 from our train path. So scrolling back down, so we're giving this fit generator our train batches. We're specifying this parameter steps per epoch equals four. So steps per epoch is the total number of steps or the batches of samples to yield from the generator before declaring one epoch is finished. So since I have 40 images total in my training set, then to iterate over all the images one time with a batch size of 10, our steps per epoch would be four. So basically what you want to do is take the size of your data set, which in my case is 40, and then you're going to divide it by your batch size, which in our case that we defined earlier is 10. So 40 divided by 10 for this example is four. So that's where I got that number from. The next 
parameter here is validation data. So going back to the video on what validation data is and how to create that in Keras, that's what we're specifying here and we're pointing it to our valid batches that we defined at the top of the notebook. And then our validation steps is four. And the calculation was done in the exact same way as we calculated for our steps per epoch on our training batches. How many epochs do we want to run? I am choosing five here, and I'm specifying the verbosity to equal two. And as mentioned in other videos, the verbosity is just in regards to how much output we want to see printed to the console. So now let's run this fit generator function and see what type of metrics we get. Okay, so it just finished running all five epochs, and if we look at what type of metrics we're getting, we see that they are actually pretty awful, right? So our loss is extremely high, and it's actually getting higher with each epoch. Our accuracy is only at about 52%, and it's getting lower with each epoch, and our validation loss and validation accuracy are behaving in a similar fashion. So really bad results. So don't worry, there are some things that we're going to learn over the next couple of videos. Actually, in the very next video after this one, we're going to show how well or how poorly this model actually predicts on images of cats and dogs based on what it's learned over these five epochs. And then going forward, we're going to go into the concept of fine tuning an existing trained model. And that's actually going to yield some pretty extraordinary results for our example of predicting whether an image is a cat or a dog. So we're going to be going in that direction. I just wanted to go ahead and show you here how you could build and train a simple CNN and expose you to the Conv2D layer that we've not touched on before. And going forward, we're going to talk about the importance of fine tuning and why it makes so much more sense to start out with a model that's already been trained on images and then fine tune that existing model for images that you're interested in classifying. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like this video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. Thanks for watching.